Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? RealFansRealTalk.com Where well, Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and Intern Tom For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics hey, hey. RealFansRealTalk.com Got it, uh -huh. they got the hottest bloggers Did Jeremy Lin hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest yeah, yeah. Go check out the art even tell a neighbor, tell a body sent ya From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about son Real fans, real talk dot com, I'm out one Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk dot com What's going on? Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk It's Trip Young and I'm in a good groove today because uh, we got a very special guest that's going to be joining us a little later. I'm not even going to let the cat out the bag right now because we got, we got a little bit of sports to get to. But just know I'm in a good groove today. But uh, So before we jump into all the sports, it's preseason football. It's going on right now. Giants, Patriots. Plus, uh, uh, how do you say it, Statman? The, 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 the battle, Green Garbage, the green garbage game. Uh, game is going on right now between the Eagles and the Jets. Last time I checked, the Jets was up. So I know David will be happy about that. But uh, before we get into that, let me introduce my co-host, the one and only Mark the Statman, Skevich. What's going on, everyone? Great to be back for another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. Uh, football regular season is almost upon us. We just came off of a historic fight this past weekend and a lot of stuff to cover in the world of sports. We also got Ladybug in the starting lineup because... You know, a lot of people out there on social media, they tune in for Ladybug, and then they find out last minute that she's on suspension. The petitions and, have been working. And the then, petitions. there you go. So now we got to make sure people... Fans. She, it. she did appeal it. I yeah. did appeal it. I did my petitions. They said I have to have 500 petitions, excuse me. And my fans, my followers, you guys are the real MVP. So now I'm here. I'm back. So what's up? Of course, Eric Sanchez. <laughs> Mr. Game of Thrones himself. Yeah, yeah. I'm just <laughs> waiting for you to miss a day so I can take that seat again, man. But, you know, until then, oh, my spot right here. Nah, Stat <laughs> Man, he good. He good. He good. It's over for that. If he was worried about that, don't worry no more. He ain't missing I'm no good. I'm sitting here with Ladybug. I see she got a lot on the rumor mill. So she it's going to be a, a great episode today. Looking forward to it. But uh, so we just gonna, we going to jump uh, straight in uh, right now. First of all, before we even jump into all of the sports, uh, we did have a, a tragedy um, that's going on right now over in Houston. So, you know, we definitely want to send our prayers out to everybody in Houston. Uh, if you can uh, donate, definitely, please, because they can use every bit, whether it's financial, even, you know, things just going from toothbrushes to, to baby wipes to, you know, food, whatever you can, you can donate if you can help, you know, definitely. I hope you guys see uh, the screen right there. Um, Houston Rockets owner, he donated uh, $10 million to the Hurricane Relief. And uh, a lot of people have been stepping up. I know Kevin Hart, he started the uh, the uh, donation challenge where he's trying to get all of his friends to donate $25,000 each. And uh, everybody's been stepping up. I know J-Lo and, uh, and, and A-Rod, they, they donated. Puff donated. Uh, you know, and J.J. Watt place for the Texans he's doing an amazing job he was trying to raise a million and he's already at 10 million uh dollars right now thanks to oh it well, went up you see it went up to his left to so he's doing his thing I know Ellen put in a million herself so shout out to Ellen on, on that one but you know again everyone is donated as, as well so you know guys if you can whatever you know every little bit helps whether it's a penny nickel dollar ten hundred if you can do more than that if you got a little extra in the bank you know you had a, a good month, you know, then uh, send something over. They can definitely use all the help they can get. And we definitely going to keep praying for everybody in Houston. And uh, the, the hurricane is actually starting to starting to move now, too. So, you know, everyone else, just just prepare yourselves. All right. And with that being said, though, we're going to get into the into this uh, to the sports, man. We got a lot going on. And in, uh, in, in this uh preseason football right now i mentioned the the giants and the uh, patriots are playing right now 
So we are definitely looking forward to that game. I know we, we, we would, did want to be watching that game. We were actually at the game, the last year's preseason game between the Giants and the Patriots when the, uh, when the Giants won. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. But we'll update you guys. You know, this preseason is always good to see uh, uh, the Pats. Lose, yeah, so. especially to the Giants. I mean, you know, Eli, for some strange reason, has the Patriots number. And Even if he only plays while. one quarter somehow. Like it's, the, it's that Eli magic, you know? That's that's what it is. So but The Patriots are just scared of Big Blue. That's just how it goes down. But we were talking about the hurricane, and we had a fan mail question. Vince from Brooklyn wrote in, should the Texans cancel their home preseason finale? Uh, well, they don't necessarily have to cancel it, but it has been moved uh, to Arlington, Texas, where, you know, it, it's against the Cowgirls. So the Dallas Cowgirls will be home instead of being away, but still close enough uh, for them to, to move. And, I mean, you don't necessarily need to cancel a game. Uh, the LSU-BYU uh, college game was supposed to be in Houston as well. That's being moved to somewhere in New Orleans, not officially announced yet. Uh, so LSU would be getting home, home court, in a sense, uh, home field in that one, so being in uh, Louisiana. So, but... Um, yeah, that answered that question. I mean, the news came out after we got the fan mail question, but we do appreciate the fans writing in. The email address is fanmail at realfansrealtalk.com. What they could do, though, is uh, donate, you know, a percentage of those uh, proceeds, whatever they make from the game, to the hurricane relief. Well, I'm sure Jerry Jones will do his share, um, especially since he'll be getting the revenue, uh, you know, for the for the event as opposed to the Houston Texans getting the revenue. I'm sure he'll uh, he'll you know be donating something but he uh speaking of jerry jones he says there is no evidence to justify the ezekiel elliott suspension um what's your i, I know it's the cowgirl so we have a little bias there but that's uh that's, that's that's jerry world and uh you know jerry sometimes i just don't know with him but i mean he's got to support his guys but in, in this situation there's definitely you know some, some evidence there now May, it may not be, you know, as, as much because I know he's going through the appeal process right now, and it's supposed to have a have a, a result by Monday. Um, but there's definitely some evidence there, and there's a whole lot of paperwork uh, behind it. So I don't know in this situation what Jerry is talking about with there being no evidence. And you know, we spoke last week uh, about the the girl in, in in question and how she was saying she was going to ruin his career. You know, she, how she's white and he's a black athlete, so she was going to ruin him. But there's definitely a couple of situations that 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 went on. So we're going to wait and see. Um, and we spoke about it last week. You know, that the effect of Ezekiel Elliott not being there right now. The suspension is six games. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna see what they bring it down. So I know they if they do bring it down, it'll probably be the three games. But I mean it's the NFL, so we gotta wait and see. Like, like I said, by by Monday we'll know what's gonna happen, and then of course the Cowgirls play the Giants in Week One. So we'll see how, how that whole yeah, thing We works might out. have uh, Odell Beckham out for Week One, so that'll kind of even even things out, I guess, as far as both missing a uh, top star, but. Uh, Speaking of the uh, other, you know, corny teams in the NFC East, or you have the the Redskins. This is actually uh, a, a, a political move. The schools in D.C. are banning Redskins gear. What's your take on that? Um, I mean, it started because one of the students they were they were doing a project in in the school. They were researching Native Americans, and one of the students who was actually Native American said that he was he felt offended by it so you know that led to the schools getting behind them and now they're they're banning redskins yeah I'm, i mean i'm okay with it you know um i'm 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 definitely for them changing the name i know you know they've been trying to their hardest to not change it as far as the organization goes but i'm okay with them changing the name and and i support the schools and uh, and what they're doing you know yeah this is something that's been going on for a little while in dc and um, now the schools are stepping in, but they definitely need to change the name. And it's been something that's been in the works for a few years out there. Yeah, I mean, you have a lot of announcers out there that just call them, you know, but refer to them as Washington and won't say the name, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so a lot of people are getting behind it. And, and from a business standpoint, they'd actually make a lot more money if they changed the name because everyone who has, you know, Redskins gear is going to have to buy something new to go to the games because they're no longer the Redskins. But... I mean, they say it was a tribute to one of the original head coaches who was Native American, so they named the team after him or something like that, you know, but 
at this point. Yeah. Now the way the <laughs> world is, is everything point. is, you know, a lot of people are, you know, behind certain things and they want to be politically correct in all aspects. So I guess now the way business and society is, that you know, it's just your safest bet is to be politically correct. And yeah, just, I mean, you know, if anything, they're losing money by not doing safe it. Safe and so. sorry. Yeah. So what do you, oh, over, under three years before we see a change? Over. Uh, yeah, you know what? As yeah. much as I would like to say under, I, I mean, they've been fighting this thing for the longest. And like you said, I mean, in their opinion, it's, it's, a, it's a tribute to one of their former coaches. So, you know, but I so I think it's going to be over. I, it's, I don't it's think over that, three years, to, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I NFL doesn't perform. move fast on anything. Yeah, exactly. So it, it'll, it'll still take probably be five years before they actually change the name. Well, I mean, they're probably thinking of names as we speak, but I mean, it's, it's rough. as long as they don't do the Pelicans, like, you know, like yeah, exactly. You know, New Orleans came out with the Pelicans. I'm like, huh? I mean, you got lions, bears, and all that yeah, out there it. already. So definitely over Wildcats. <laughs> I don't know. But listen, there's a lot of names, a lot of animals. Maybe they could they could name name the team after. So I'm sure they'll come up with something if if they really want to. But it's going to take a well, lot more pressure. Maybe, uh, well, not pig skins, but, you know, the pig, you know, the Redskins have those. Uh, the hogs pigs, were, yeah. The hogs, yeah. So they could probably just name them the hogs. They might go to it, yeah. I mean, it's, hogs? yeah, <laughs> Danny Snyder just doesn't want to change the name. He doesn't He doesn't want to budge on it. I think yeah. he was on HBO a few years ago and had an interview where he just, yeah, just seemed very, like, stubborn. uninterested in, yeah, in yeah. having a conversation or changing the name. So as long as he's still there in ownership, like I said, it's going to be a long, drawn-out process. Well, so there's a couple of owners that need to get up out of those seats. Oh, there's seats. a lot of owners that need to <laughs> So we, we'll see. Especially if what you else mean, uh, James. Uh, <laughs> they should have threw him out the garden instead of Oakley, but well, that's <laughs> that's a that's a, yeah, that's a different story. <laughs> yeah. That's just because the Knicks suck and they've been stuck for so long. But that, yeah. I mean, that's neither here nor there. I'm sorry, Statman. I didn't mean to bring yeah, that up. Yeah, of course you meant we to bring to, that up because you have to, have to find somehow to bring it up. <laughs> but if you want to talk about the Knicks, uh, KP said that uh, the reason why he didn't go to the uh, the exit meeting wasn't because of Phil Jackson. He says it was because of Jess Hornacek. So. Yes, he called him a name that we cannot say on, on the air. air. Mm -hmm. That's um, a lie. I don't believe that story yeah. at all. I mean... Listen, if he if he did say it, I don't I mean, blame for it. Jeff is still there. But, I mean, you have a free pass yeah. to just say it was Phil Jackson, and Phil Jackson isn't there. Now you're going to have beef with your your coach. Is he trying to pull LeBron where he decides who the coaches are? I mean, it, it could be that. Maybe he's not happy with Hornacek's coaching style, but I don't think the issue was with Hornacek. All the reports during the season were that Hornacek was a big fan of all the players, and he was a player-friendly coach. Yeah. I mean, you know, Melo talked about it. Everyone spoke about it, so... And, and if the issue was with Hornacek, why didn't Phil reach out during the offseason then? Before Phil decided to walk away, Phil would have reached out and tried to make it right with Przingis if the issue wasn't with Przingis. Yeah. I think the issue was between those two. Yeah. Well, why do you think KP would have would have claimed that it was Hornacek? He may not like the style of play, but I don't think... Well, but KP hasn't come, time, out, and, KP hasn't really come out and say that, said that. KP sure. didn't say that. That's a report claiming that from Peter Vesey claiming that the reason he skipped the exit meeting was because of yeah. what was said between uh, Hornacek and KP. So, man, we just need to bring Porzingis on the show and, and talk to him about this whole yeah, situation. Get this whole straight Pete, yeah, you know, Peter Vesey's kind of a troublemaker as well. He, he drops these little, you know, tidbits of things that he claims happen in the locker room, and you know. Yeah. It's gossip. That's all it is. I don't think it's... I think the issue was Phil. I think we all know the issue was Phil. Well, Phil had... And everybody was... The issue was... Yeah, was yeah. Indirectly, if, you know, if it was Hornacek because of the triangle, that's Phil's fault anyway. Yeah, yeah. So. It all comes back to Phil. Everything's Phil's fault. Let's, yeah, let's just blame it on Phil. He's going down anyway, and then just start from scratch, and that's it. <laughs> there you go. It's, all it's always fault. easy to blame somebody that isn't there anymore, so... I mean, he was sleep on the job half the time anyway, so he, does, he doesn't yeah, even that, know what's no, going that's on. that's true. All right, well, in other NBA news, Kyrie um, Irving and Isaiah Thomas trade is official. There were some talks of the trade not going through because of Isaiah Thomas's hip injury. They were wondering uh, whether he was healthy, and they probably were thinking of not going through with the trade, which would have definitely been awkward if Kyrie Irving would have uh, had to come out and, and start playing for the, the Cavs alongside LeBron mm -hmm. this season if the trade didn't go through. Nah, I think they had to add a, a second round mm -hmm. pick as well yeah, the to close pick. the deal, yeah. deal too. So. They added a second round pick. That won't mean anything to the long term of the Cavs. 
but cause. yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I'm glad they got it done, and now we could we could just move on. But I, I do think it was detrimental for Boston to get it done because after you trade Isaiah Thomas, after he put everything yeah. into that team, playing the day after his sister dies, and y'all just gonna get rid of him like that, and then he has to come back. So uh, you know, the Not Celtics right. definitely wanted to just finish this thing and get it done. And now it is. I like the pieces that the Cavs got, and you know the Celtics definitely got better because they got the best player in that uh, in that deal. So I'm I'm just waiting for the season to start. And I'm hearing a couple of rumors around the campfire that the Cavs is now trying to go after Demarcus Cousins. We have to wait and see on that one. But I I mean I, of course I would love to have uh, Demarcus Cousins come over and play for the Cavs. Yeah, the Demarcus deal probably won't happen until like All Star break. Yeah. Because the Pelicans can't give up on that uh, nucleus just, just yet. yet yeah. You know, with them signing Drew Holiday to come back and obviously the pieces they gave up to get Demarcus, you can't now just flip them after 30 games and be like, all right, this isn't working. You know, technically they didn't really give up too much. <laughs> That's not true. They gave up the first round pick this year, which turned out to be De'Aaron Fox, and they gave up the first round pick last year, which was Buddy Hill. So but Sacramento yeah, has their backup. He got his game up. He ain't really show me nothing. Yeah, but I mean, you telling me you giving up DeMarcus, who was about to become a free agent at the time. DeMarcus yeah, only had they one got more. Two, they got two. Yeah, young you guys got two quality them. pieces for a guy who had one year left on his deal. That's a solid deal for Sacramento. Yeah, you can see how the chemistry works out for the first. Absolutely. Half of the season. Yeah, they they've, they've got to at least play forty games together before you entertain a trade. So I'm just uh, simulate like you said last week. It, what did he yeah, that's, if we do a 2K GM mode and just simulate <laughs> the first two months of the season, yeah, that's what I'm and thinking. We can get right to it and, and let's let's talk about the trade because we know mm, the Pelicans go. ain't going anywhere. Exactly, that's we know who's going to be in the finals, so we might as well if that's going to happen. We'll, 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 let's just start an All Star game. Would that, make, would that make sense for the Cavs, like halfway through the season, to trade possibly Love and someone else? Yes, you to know. get Demarcus Cousins. Yes. Well, you know what about as far as chemistry is concerned? You're talking about you're playing without. They're not, they're not even going to have would, Isaiah Thomas the first half of the season. So. Honestly, it would, it would depend on where that pick from the Nets is, where it looks like it's going to land. If it if that Nets pick looks like it's going to be a top three pick, then it's going to be tough to make that deal and give up the, that top three pick for DeMarcus, who's going to be a rental player. LeBron's on his last year. Isaiah's on his last year. So you would be rebuilding with no pieces and no yeah. draft picks. So that'll play a factor as well, depending on where that Nets pick is. Yeah. Um, but if, if the Cavs feel they're close enough, absolutely. Kevin Love has done nothing in, in the last two finals. That first playoff run, he missed well, it. Marcus Cousins also rumored to not be, uh, you know, be a bit of a distraction. So too, was J.R. So. Smith. Yeah, and he came to, he came to Cleveland, <laughs> so and we saw a whole new J.R. They only, Smith. They're only distractions when, you're not, when they're not winning. When you're winning, everyone's well, a team Well, LeBron could give J.R. Smith a backhand. I don't think he could do that with, with Boogie Cousins. I mean, well, no, he doesn't have to because LeBron's, you know, leadership, and, and he makes the guys around him better. So I think DeMarcus Cousins will come in there if they can get him. And, I mean, he, he's going to have a chance to play for a championship. He's not coming in there to, to mess yeah, with Yeah, I mean, all that DeMarcus talk is the media's way of saying he's not nice to us. That's all it really is. Because when he played with Team USA two summers ago, there were no issues. Yeah. He's not getting any issues off the court. It's just because the me he's not friendly to the media. He's the Marshall Lynch of the NBA. Then it's like, oh, we don't like this guy. He's a headache. He's a problem behind the scenes. We've learned how to take three pointers too, even though that, listen, that's the always say even better Marcus because that's how Cleveland plays. He's a beast. So, so you can't if you got a chance to get to Marcus yeah. Cousins. Even, listen. You work that out, you get back to the finals, you know, that's a, that's going to be a series that, that we're going to have between Golden State and Cleveland. If they're close enough and they feel he's the final piece, you make the deal. Well, he's by far the best center in the league yeah. right now, so. Better than Anthony Actually. Davis? I mean, well, you, got, I mean, I mean he's, they, they, four, he's I mean, going back and forth, so. More of a four, I would think, too. But yeah, they got and they got uh, cousins yeah, playing. I mean, it's but, up, I mean it's either way, something. he's up there, though. Yeah, yeah, either way, he's there. He's. I don't think anybody's going to put him low True than center, three, as say. far as uh, at the center position. All righty, moving along. Uh, the new Air Jordan Thirty Two released. Well, I don't know if anyone picked them up yet. I, but I wasn't really feeling it, to be honest. Which you know what? Honestly, I haven't really. It like is the, the real Jordan's, fans, the real talk colors. Cause, yeah, but you know, since Jordan since like since like twenty, I haven't really liked Jordans like that. That's why I always go back to the classic Jordans the retros. Cause I I don't know. I'm just after twenty, it just wasn't the same for me. Yeah, I'm not really feeling them, and like that that knit material on the front is almost like what KD recently released. Uh, you know, with the little they bit. They do of, look better than the, the Lonzo Ball sneakers, though. I will say that. They, <laughs> yeah, they the are better than the Big Ball and, and the Lonzo Ball flip oh, and, the, and the James Harden. We had the James Harden's up. Was the a James couple Harden's ago. terrible. They look better than the James yeah, Harden's and, and, and the Steph Curry's. Like yeah. And the Steph Curry. I mean, they look better. I like the traditional logo. But it's a tribute to the two. Yeah, the traditional logo is dope, but I don't really like the rest of the sneaker. 
Yeah, it looked like a trainer slash basketball. Yeah, slash, like yeah. They, they Flash, I'm gonna step on the back and use them as flip flops. MJ got to step his game up on, on <laughs> the design. I don't know who's designing his sneakers now, but yeah. yeah. he got to step his game running. up. Throw these on real quick. Yeah, it looked like it could be a slipper. Okay, yeah, I'm not digging them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> not, not at all. Moving along. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, moving along. We 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 got to jump into this uh, McGregor fight really quick because we got a special guest that's about to come on. And um, but it, it wouldn't be right if we didn't talk about McGregor and uh, Mayweather. Mayweather, who is now 50 and 0, um, after a long stretch of trash talk between the two of these guys, McGregor calling him out and. Mm. Mayweather said, you know what, let's do it. They stepped into the boxing ring this past Saturday. And as the world knows, there was a stoppage in the 10th round. Uh, I called it, by the way. I called it. I just want to say this live, <laughs> and my friends can vouch. I called the fight was going to be over in the 10th round. And whoever didn't finish paying me my money, I know what it is. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> but I called the 10th round. Stat man knew. Everybody knew. Nobody believed me though. They don't believe the girl. No, that's not true. I, I said the ninth. I thought the ninth. See, so you yeah. know, I, I was like, Eric did say the ninth, and um, and I did say that Mayweather <laughs> could knock him out. I wanted to actually see him to see the knock fall. McGregor out, but I the rest stopped it. The, the rest fall. saved uh, McGregor, oh, he definitely saved McGregor from the embarrassment yeah. of because I, I think. If Floyd had knocked him out, it would have been really bad for McGregor. So the ref definitely saved him. I know people were talking about did he stop it too early, but at, you know at the end of the day, it's you know one of our fan mail questions too. Barry from Yonkers wrote in, "Do you guys think the fight was stopped too early?" So Not at all. You got nope. Trip's answer. I mean, yeah. I don't think. I mean, you could see in McGregor's eyes he was in La La Land. So. He was he was done in the ninth round. Yeah, it um, got crazy. Yeah. His yeah. face was, was all red. His yeah. eyes were out of it. I like. know I know everyone probably watched it with friends that day, but if you go back after the ninth round, McGregor's corner pretty much just told him just survived the round. Like they knew he was done. In the in the tenth, I believe Floyd hit him with nine straight mm -hmm. headshots. Yep. And he landed twenty of twenty six punches he mm -hmm. threw in the yeah. round. Like the dude was was about to get knocked unconscious. It was it was yeah, very it was close bad. to that, and and referee Robert Bird did the right thing. And you guys know we we've had uh, uh, Ray Boom Boom and Cini on the program uh, before, and he's actually the reason why they started cutting down the boxing matches from 15 rounds to 12 rounds because you know somebody lost their life in the ring. Absolutely. You know, um, so they're not trying to have that again, especially on this stage like that. So they have to. The ref has to step in. He did a great job with the fight. Mayweather, you know, did what he does best. He studies his opponents. And, and we actually saw Mayweather going forward this time, which, you know, people didn't expect from Mayweather, but he kept going forward, and he completely destroyed McGregor in the later rounds. He just he didn't have the stamina to hang in there in the boxing fight. It was, just, it was too much for him. And you saw the inexperience in McGregor. He, he didn't know what to do once he started getting abused like that by Mayweather, and that was all, all she wrote. And I did say last week that the first couple of rounds were going to go to McGregor because mm -hmm. Mayweather's going to fall back. Sure enough, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, McGregor did a lot better than I expected, though. That's for sure. I mean, he, you know, I didn't expect him to do... I, I expect him to be dominated a lot more. Like, not necessarily, um, you know, knocked out in the sixth round or something, but I, I figured it would be more more dominant for the entire fight. I mean, yeah. he did eventually end up dominating, as we could see, but yeah. I thought it was going to be a lot worse for McGregor. Yeah, I thought his movement in the ring was better than I thought. Cause I mm -hmm. thought he was going to look really awkward. Mm -hmm. So his movement in the ring was a little better, but he didn't have anything. I mean, he hit Floyd with a clean shot in the first round, and it, it didn't yeah. buckle Floyd, didn't do anything. Well, so Floyd said, knew. you know, he, he, he had good power, but it's not something that he hasn't seen before. Yeah. So, you know, plus, plus some gloves is different. It's not MMA gloves. Yeah, but I don't even think it's that. I, I just think it, it's the punching style. You know, yeah. MMA, I've heard other UFC guys talk about it. MMA guys are taught to punch just to keep you at a distance. They're not really punching to knock you out with the... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're, they're not following through. through. Yeah. Yeah. MMA fight, it's a lot, of, it's a lot of tapping. Like, uh, it's a lot yeah, of slapping. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he kind of did the same thing with Floyd, too. He was landing some shots, and he was changing up the pace really well. But he, it wasn't like it was punches with Floyd's head was just getting snapped back. It yeah. was almost touching him, touching it him just to... clean. Yeah. Like you said last week, it was like it wasn't really clean yeah. hits until Mayweather really got yeah, once in control. Saw, then you seen the hits that we were all talking about, that we were all used to. So. Mm -hmm. Once he, Floyd turned up, turned up the fire on him. He did surpass Rocky Eighth Marciano, even though, again, that's a heavyweight record. But Floyd is 50-0, so congrats to Floyd. 
Next up, we got Triple G and uh, Canelo Alvarez at the end of the month. And we're going to get more into that as the weeks go along. But and right McGregor, now, McGregor is also uh, medically suspended for Oh, yeah, he months. can't even fight right now. They, yeah, they, but that, I don't think that's uh, anything suspicious. I, I no, that's just right. because yeah, it's concussion yeah, protocol. Because the fight yeah, exactly, exactly. The fight was stopped, so, yeah. yeah. So nothing. He didn't, he didn't take anything illegal, guys. Just yeah, so y'all yeah. know, just you know, they, they just want to just make sure all the fighters are safe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It used to be back in the old days. You know, you would fight, and then the next week you would fight. Like, yeah, you know yeah. that's why the yeah. older guys had a hundred fights under their belt. Exactly. They would because fight twice in the supermarket, once on the way to the fight. <laughs> that's three right there. You three exactly. and zero. You done got so three under your belt. There it is. But uh, listen, guys. We um I, you know I was I was I was I was on my on my um on my computer listening to some good music. I was going back giants. some yeah I had some soulful, soulful joints. So, you know I was, <laughs> my so, a couple of my favorites. I said yo man, that's why I told you I was in a good groove. I was listening to groove thing, you know uh, hey DJ was, you know just a couple <laughs> of joints and it just had me in a good mood. And um you know Brick is, is doing a, a lot of really good things and they uh, teamed up with the Source for the Source 360. So uh, you know. We always we come out and try to support, and um, we, we we bumped into uh, Renee Nouvelle, and uh, you know one half of of one of the the, the dopest groups in the nineties, Jeanne, and uh, we spoke to her. She was so dope, and she said that she would come on to the show, sit down, chop it up with us for a little while, and, and even let us hear some of the vocals because she still got it. She 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 did a little warm up before the show started, and uh, everybody just stopped what they was doing. To uh to turn and, and, and look because she just has an amazing voice, so we are going to just play a little bit from her performance at the uh, Source 360 while we get her set up and ready to uh to come on the air. I'm 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 excited because I'm looking forward to this to this one for oh my goodness. All my '90s kids are exactly. with me right so now. Exactly. So this yes. you know this this is one of my childhood questions. So <laughs> yeah, y'all better stop playing. But um no, but make sure make sure you guys are following us on the web realfansrealtalk.com. Facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk. Uh, Twitter, Instagram at Real Fan Talk. And of course, subscribe to that YouTube channel, YouTube.com forward slash For the Fans Productions. And uh, if you guys are ready in the back, we are going to jump into that video. When we come back, we are going to have Renee Nouvelle bless us with those vocals.
Right, welcome back. That's that, y'all just got a little taste right there, but you about to get the real thing. I told y'all I was there. I was in the front row. I, listen, all right, I, I'm happy today, but we are going to 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 introduce one more time the beautiful soul singingist, Miss mm, mm, mm. Renee Nouvelle. Welcome to Real Fans Real Talk. Had to do your Barry White voice. I did. I did. Can, I, can I get a little smooth on him? <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Brooklyn, for giving me everything that I am, everything that I have become. This is always going to be home. So whenever you're ready, you know, just drop the track because I, you know, I'm ready for whatever you want. <laughs> thank you, Brick TV. Big up East Flatbush, Midwood High School. Temple University, mom and dad, you watching, this is called I Am, whether I lose the fight, this is speaking to the people, I can't deny it, good God, I can't deny it, Oh, I can't deny it Some of y'all know I was born to fight My people in the back said the wall don't stop Scissors, won't you help me sing? Every day I've been thinking about this paper And it seems like we can't get together And at night I feel cold And I feel my center roll I say it's reality we need to take a new direction Can't believe we're suffering with our soul intervention Can't believe I wanna sing yes I wanna let it go I wanna set it free Cause whether I win or lose I am Whether I win this fight I am Whether I'm black or white I am You see God gave me this to day that I, I will be, be. I yeah. am See whether you like me I am Whether you love me back, rob me blind, do me wrong I, oh. I am, I am, I am See every day I've been looking at this paper And it seems like we can't get it together and at night I feel cold and I feel my center roll I say, I think we need to take a new direction Can't believe we're suffering with our soul's intervention Can't believe I'm gonna sing it, I'm gonna let it go I'm gonna set it free, cause whether I win or lose whether I win this fight, I am. Whether I'm wrong or right, I yes. am. You see, God gave me this air Every to breathe, and I, I will be. be. I am. See, whether.
Whether you like me I am Whether you love me right Do me wrong Do me wrong Do me wrong oh, 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 oh. Whether I'm black or white, yeah. <laughs> you see, God gave me this air to breathe, and I am, I am, I am, I am. You are, we are, we will, we are right, we gon' be alright. See, we gon' be alright, we gon' be alright, we gon' be alright. Sing, I am, I am, I am, I am. Thank you. Every day I will be. Thank you. That's for the people. All right. I had, I had to go to go live on on, on Instagram for they that one. This is high word. Excuse. You. Listen. All right. We, we we having fun today. So uh, we gonna, encore second performance. Uh, so we different, uh, different song. We got anything back there? I will do it all. I will do See, the old, the new, the playing. current. Hey, Mr. D. <laughs> it's no. all, it's no. all me. So I'll, no, I'll, uh, we, we, no, we That's all. That's all. That's all. Y'all gonna get is, is one one song right now. Cause we got some talking to do. Okay. We want we want want the people oh, yes. to know Please what's been going on. Yes, yes, thank you. Come and join we know us. we know you got something big coming up. You getting ready? You getting ready to leave us? Yes, I am. <laughs> so no pun intended. <laughs> Damn. But I'm coming right back. All right, cool. Cause we we gonna miss you. Yeah, you know I gotta come in. That's right. We gotta hold on. Oh we got to get gosh. comfortable now. Now we got to get real comfortable. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was that was that was dope. That was Thank dope. You. We are so you. happy that you could. We didn't we didn't know you was gonna you was gonna perform today. We were, I was I thought we was just gonna we was gonna sit and talk and, and all that, but you decided to bless us with that. So we are definitely grateful that you decided to come up and, and, and sing for us today. For as long as you have an open mic for me, understand that Renee Neva will always perform oh and give you what you want. That, that's you fashion. want the old, oh you want the new, you want the current, right I will give you what you want. Because oh this goodness. is what it's you know, when, when we are artists and we are given a platform, it is very important to understand that it's it's not something that just you know it's not easy and and it's a gift it's it's a blessing i should say it's a gift from god and if the people want something from you how dare you say no mm. if if you brought something to their lives at some point in their lives and and they attach themselves to a good feeling how dare you say no it's almost like you're 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 slapping god in the face you know so it is my duty to make sure that if i'm in a room and you need a tune, I forgive it to you. Well, I, listen, I was I was already in a good mood because I knew you was coming. Now I'm in a great mood, mm -hmm. and I want you to just tell let other people know because I know we spoke about this when we first uh, linked up. But you are getting ready to go back out on on tour. You're going overseas yes. to Japan. Yes. Tell me, tell us about the tour. Okay, so basically, uh, since 2002, I have been touring with Roy Hargrove, who's one of jazz's mm -hmm. biggest legends. Um, in the RH Factor, I'm the voice of the RH Factor, along with everyone. Um, one of the musicians, and I'm also one of the musicians in the band. We've done uh, three albums, two of which were Grammy nominated. So, with Roy Hargrove, who I have so much um, love and respect for, I was able to establish Renee Neuville as the name, the brand itself, outside of the group, um, but in the jazz arena. And so what we're doing now in, in September, we're actually going back to Tokyo and Nagoya to perform the Blue Note Jazz Festival along with Gregory Porter and, and a host of other great, great artists that I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing. And, um, and then we're going to do an entire week in Tokyo at all the Blue Note clubs. So we have about eight or nine uh, shows to do. This is about our fourth time doing the Blue Notes in Japan, but we, we've done Moscow, we've done Lithuania, we've done Brazil, we've done China, we've done Japan, we've, you know, with Roy, um, I was able to see the world, which is like, a, you know, I'm really indebted to him for, and it, it helped me to um, sort of further um, grow my roots in music as a musician, um, which has allowed me also to produce these songs like I Am, and, and watching me, all my new singles, I've been able to 
produce them. So I'm, you know, self-contained at this point. And had it not been for that experience after Jeanne, um working with RH Factor, who knows? Who knows? It and, was a blessing. You had a whole lot of success with uh, Jeanne. Yeah, you guys had what was it, four top ten records on that time. Yeah, was it more than four? Um, four. Well, I know that I don't know how many. I know that I gotta go back and look at the plaques. But I've written all of the hits for the group. So mm -hmm. hey, Mr. DJ wrote "Sending My Love." Groove thing, and then I also wrote um, "It's a Party" with Busta Rhymes, mm -hmm. and I wrote "Crush" and "Saturday Night," mm -hmm. and all the singles. Um, and we were really um, blessed to have had that opportunity at that time. I mean, the '90s era was a very golden and a very special time. Mm -hmm. It was. It wasn't just golden; it was platinum too. Oh, uh, we well, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yes, <laughs> and it was. And the thing about it is, and especially. Being a native of, of New York, being a native particularly from Brooklyn, That's it was right. really exciting. Yes, it was really exciting to be here during the time because you could just walk down 8th Street and run into Tip or run into Yasin Bey, a.k.a. Mo Steph. Mo Steph. I mean, these people are people that are actual friends. Um, the, com the competition in the game really was about who could be um, the most original. It wasn't about how much money you had. I think nowadays um, our generation, well the generations now, the, 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 the whole culture now is so money driven. It's almost like I, I sometimes wonder if people are going to be okay if they die and they're not a billionaire. Like are you going to be okay with your life if you die and you're not a billionaire? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the aspiration back then was really to make good music, have a quality life, have great fun, great memories, which also speaks to why the millennials are sort of, you know, emulating that that vibe, they're trying mm -hmm. to recapture it, because it, it was, it definitely was a special time, you know. It's crazy, I'm looking just like starstruck, like you, like my mom had all those songs playing, like Saving My Love is my favorite visual, oh. like the gold is, is, was my was my video, like I want to do that now. So that video was actually directed by Antoine Fuqua, mm -hmm. Antoine Fuqua was the director of mm -hmm. Training Day. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah I, I, I definitely put two and two together, <laughs> and it was just, <laughs> now my thing, and that's what I'm saying now, seeing when I was like three, four years old, my mom's playing while I'm cleaning and just, hey, Mr. D, like, those things now, my question to you is, you know, that's what I said to you in the beginning, the passion, like, what keeps you driven? You know, with everything, like you said, with the generations and the time changing, society changing and things happening, what keeps you personally what keeps you motivated after all these years? What keeps you waking up and acting like this is the first day on the job? Because a lot of artists and musicians, you don't see that anymore. They're kind of happy being a one-hit wonder. Or they're kind of happy just making one song that people's only going to hear for like six months. And then th they still try and consider themselves, you know, this artist and things like that. But you personally, like, just looking at you and still seeing you as happy and as driven as you are. What, what's the secret? Like, if 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 it is, I have, I have, but I, I can definitely tell you what the secret is. I mean, gratitude, empathy, humility, understanding where you are isn't where you have to be. Understanding what's important. For me, peace of mind is important in that I've had the happiest years of my life since 2000 on. And so I sort of protect my peace of mind with everything I've got. Um, but there's a lot of distractions out here. Um, I come from a very strong, tightly knit family that were immigrants here from Jamaica and all they see when they see me is Renee. So I stay close to them. My mom, my dad, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, my nieces, my nephews, my brothers. Um, and I try to preserve that joy. So if I sit down to write a song, for instance, like I am, anytime I write a song, I'm not really thinking all about me. I'm thinking about you. Because music has to be selfless. You know, it's, it's like servitude. I have to 
somehow shift your emotion through the pen and through the song. So in order to do that, I constantly um, try my best to, to, to preserve that thing that keeps me a fan, that keeps me your sister, that keeps me not a celebrity. You know, a lot of people in Brooklyn, they still know me because I'm still, I'm still just Renee. I need that. I need, the, I need to stay grounded for my life. You know, I want to grow old creating music. I want to grow old being able to perform and to shift the energy in a room. So I got to protect that. Um, so it's really, it's really just that. It's really just that. And you, you you mentioned that you wrote all of those hits. That was you know I was in love with those songs. But you've also written for a lot of other artists as well. So who 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 is I guess who's your favorite artist that you're working with right. or writing writing for? Writing for? There really is no favorite. Everyone that I've ever written for, whether it's Leela James, whether it's Aaliyah, whether it's Buster, whether it's Will Down, whoever I've ever written for or written with. Um, I'm a fan, and it's a privilege to do so. Uh, but I can tell you there are certain public figures that I just resonate with as people. Their philosophies um, are in alignment with mine. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, in uh, August, we had an amazing run. Brother Dave Chappelle yes. did a residency at Radio City Music Hall, and he was so gracious enough to invite me to not just one, but two of his jam sessions, mm -hmm. where I was able to perform with Bilal, and I was able to perform with John Mayer, I was able to perform with Yasin. They, I mean, it was just like, people like that, who just see your soul, they don't see your algorithm, they don't see the numbers you have on Instagram, they just see you, those are the people that I resonate with the most. Well, because you can really sing, too. A lot of people, they Thank can't you. really, you know. Now all these people out here that's making songs can really sing. You Thank can you. actually sing. So. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I started out as a pianist. I was um, trained at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, and I was mm. very shy. So I didn't really start to sing until late. But I would say that my, um, just the touring and the, the road work with Roy Hargrove, Mm -hmm. allowed for me to understand my instrument a bit more and how to fit in each and every situation appropriately. You know, um, like Roy said something the other day about the swing. You know, in, in jazz there's this thing called the swing and it's, it's usually um, initiated by the drummer and the hi-hat. You know, but what he said was the swing ain't always just a technical thing. It's that thing that makes you want to move. The spirit, mm -hmm. it's the energy. You understand me? When I was talking about Africa, that's what I'm talking about. That soul, that energy, that's where we come from. You always gotta hold on to that. Find it. If you don't see it, find it, cause it's in you. You know, and that's kind of, that's what will keep you relevant in the heart to people. For decades and decades, no matter what the the uh, the shell looks like, as we age and we grow, the spirit will remain. And I'm really, at this point in stage, I just want to make sure that I preserve that, you know, because we need to connect more and more as, as people right now. We're we're living in a very um, volatile time, mm -hmm. emotionally, politically. Uh, everyone's sensitive um, things are, are things that are have been wrong we're trying to make right and with with change that's abrupt you know you're gonna have growing pains but it can be dangerous so right now like the the, the common denominator that we all have is the spirit and the soul you know no matter what genre if it is if it's hip-hop if it's reggae if it's jazz or R&B if it's me talking to sister Nancy and you know, it doesn't matter. We're all human beings, and that's what I have learned to um, keep at the forefront in everything that I'm, I, I'm doing at this point. 
You know, we're all human beings, but do you ever get starstruck like Ladybug was starstruck I by you? I am right now. Like, I'm going to tell my mom when I get home, like, Mom, you understand what I did right now? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, no, I mean, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I have been starstruck. Most recently, it was Sister Nancy. I went to Lincoln Center, and Sister Nancy, as a Jamaican, like, mm -hmm. growing up in East Flatbush, my uncle Earl Skyers was the road manager for... A uh, singer by the name of Yellow Man. Okay, Yellow Man did Zungo, Zungo, Go, Zungo, Zang. Mm -hmm. yeah. Zungo, Zungo, Go, Zungo, Zang. Zero, zero, one, one, nine. Uh, anyway, that's Yellow Man. My uncle was his road manager, so he would bring all this vinyl to the house. And Sister Nancy they had a white label on her. And I would be in the basement and I would learn her lyrics, the A side, the B sides, and everything. I never met her. So I went to, to Lincoln Center just to see if I could meet her. And my friend Oluwase from Nigeria said, Renee, come backstage. I think you can meet Sister Nancy. And I sat and I met with her. And I said, listen, I have to tell you everything that you've ever meant to me. Everything. And she listened to me. And she let me sing those B-sides with her. Man. That's you see. Yeah, that was the best moment of my <laughs> summer. That's, that's I was enough. so starstruck because Sister Nancy was a female in dance hall when there were no females. There was no feminist movement. There was no black girls rock. There was no crusade behind her. It was she one, she alone. Mm -hmm. You understand me? How Nina Simone was like alone. You understand? She just stood there and she delivered. That was inspiring for a little 11-year-old girl. And then she, she could ride the rhythm and her tonality. And, and even though I don't do dance hall, and that, I took that spark from her. And I infused it in me. It's, she's always there. And I was able to meet her. Thanks for letting me tell you that story. <laughs> but you see, but this is just like you said, the energy is what I'm saying. Like me growing up and just like I said, I ref for all the 90s kids right now. And like you said, being millennials, we try and grasp that. I don't like what's going on right now. I don't like like I don't I feel like I'm too old. Like it's either too young or too old. I'm at that age in my life, but I'm always bringing the 90s back. The 90s always comes back to me one way or another. So even if it is through television or through social media or something like that, it's like you said, your spirit. The 90s will always have me in a good mood. It always have me up. Just flashbacks. And mind you, I wasn't a teenager. I wasn't out and about. I was in my house. But you were but alive. I was alive. I had the energy, those memories. You are in my life. So this is just an amazing moment right now for me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who, who do you listen to right now as far as like R&B? Um, well, I like... One of the new artists that I like is, um, and my nephew, Kyler Evans, he hit me to SZA. Yes. Okay. And there's something about her that I really, really like, especially that Love Galore song. Mm -hmm. um, Lauren Hill is someone that I've always looked at as, you know. Another legend. She's just one of the most important voices. And there are many important voices. Bilal. Um, is a friend, but he's also one of those most important voices of our generation. Um, but I don't only listen to R and B. I mean, I don't. I listen to hip hop. Listen to Bad and Bougie. You know, Cardi B. Let me tell you about Cardi B. That is that rags to riches. That's that rags to riches story. That is just inspiring across the board. You know, and and um. Shout out to Jasmine. Um, she works for Wendy Williams, but she actually hit me to Cardi B. And let me tell you something. Cardi B makes me so happy because as she's climbing her ladder of success, she's still maintaining who she is. And it's like, take it or leave it. This is who I am. No pretense. You have to respect someone who's that brave. We live in a time where everything is filtered. You know, and everything is posted and algorithms and timed. But when you have someone that is just themselves and so naked and doesn't really care about judgment, you have to admire that, um, that bravery, especially in this time. So I admire her for that and champion her. Um, 
I love Young and May. I love Casanova. Um, Brooklyn. Yeah, I just, I listen <laughs> to a lot. Like, I listen to a lot of hip-hop. Hip-hop signed Jeanne to the business. Mm. So, for me to to ignore hip-hop is, is blasphemous. Mm. Queen Latifah signed Jeanne to the business. Hip-hop DJs took Hey Mr. DJ that was on a white label and made it an underground buzzing hit. It wasn't even a single release by the, by the label. Yeah. The DJs made that happen. Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, that was our first recording. We were on the... the I remember that episode. The home, the home base. No, we were on the home base album. I've got yeah. the plaque at home. We, we were on the home base album. We're second single on the album after Summertime. We're in the Summertime video. Mm-hmm. So hip-hop, to me, hip-hop is always like right here. Growing up in Brooklyn, hip hop is always right here. You know what I'm saying? So, and then there's jazz, you know, and then there's classical. There's, there's life. Life inspires you. People inspire me. You know, I listen to podcasts. I, I listen to a podcast on my way over here, just for inspiration mm-hmm. to perform. I am because it's about people. It's not just about notes and sound. Well, you definitely. Inspired me today with the, with those vocals. Um, really quick, because I know we're running out of time. When you come back to Japan, you're working on your new new music, new, yes, new solo I, music. I definitely have a single that is available on iTunes. It's called "Watching Me," and it's self-produced. Um, but it's 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 a it's a great feel-good song. If you need to just feel that vibe again, just look under my name R E N E E. N E U F V I L L E, watching me. Tap that. Hold on to that. I'm coming with I Am. I'm looking to do a visual campaign on that um, because it's it's a it's a political sort of statement that is needed for the people. Um, and I'm also putting out some music, and I have a few other projects that is a little premature to talk about, but mm-hmm. one is has is involving New Orleans. I'm also performing here in Brooklyn on September 7th. It's a partnership with Carol's Daughter. Okay. And it's uh, it's like a textured runway sort of series where it's an ode to the old Brooklyn. So if you are in town, um, definitely check my IG. I will definitely promote it so you can come to this performance. It's gonna be it's gonna be hot next week. And the IG is at Renee Neuville. You guys will see it once we, once we put uh, everything up on the website. You guys, will, there you go again. If you guys say, y'all better be following her because, listen, y'all right. Y'all just got blown away. I know I just got blown away. Y'all better, y'all listen. Y'all better enjoy what, what real fans, real talk is bringing. Y'all, Renee, we appreciate you so much. I appreciate you because you know, especially just from being a fan and listening to your music and, and following in your career and then seeing you perform live and then having you come right here You're and perform, me, oh perform for us. <laughs> It's truly, I f- definitely am truly blessed today to, to have you here. And w- hopefully when you come back from Japan, we can get you back to, 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 to just yes. bless us again. Um, but with that being said, we do got to wrap things up. So for myself, Trip Young, Mark the Statman, Scavage, Ladybug, Eric Sanchez, and of course the beautiful <laughs> Renee Nouvelle. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we will see you guys next week. Good night, everyone. Good night. Face facts, what up, what up? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and Intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh-huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. Uh, they got uh, the hottest bloggers. Is Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the archives, even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Uh, real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Uh,